for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm, yes, I'm the before, I'm also our treasurer. Um, this uh, next guest, our closing keynote, um, really excited to have the opportunity to introduce him. Um, Colt Breiner is a uh, former colleague of mine, but also a very good friend. Um, this guy's been both an entrepreneur and a marketing executive since 1998. He started his own company while still in college called Coltronics. Um, did everything himself from the ground up, his own design as a matter of fact. Built up the sales to over 10,000 units per month, subsequently sold the company with a successful exit in just two years. Um, later, he worked here in Santa Rosa, which is where he and I met at uh, Democrasoft. Uh, really wonderful co uh, company, excuse me, that uh, did a kind of flipped model of education, providing an online resource for teachers, students, um, everyone in the education space, really, uh, to help hundreds of thousands of classrooms with a software called Collaborize Classroom. Uh, that's where we work together. Also, Shanna, we are kind of a, a trio there with our uh, marketing director, Mark Kithbart, who's actually also spoken uh, for PMG. Um, in 2013, he joined a company called Visiquate, a Santa Rosa-based company that provides big data solutions uh, to eliminate the inefficiencies in American healthcare through the application of artificial intelligence and process automation. Uh, to date, Visiquate has grown to support nearly 400 hospitals uh, nationwide, and he closely follows the shifting social and technological landscape, also helps educate audiences on how to position themselves for fulfilling lives in the exponential age. Um, like I said before, I'm really excited to see this guy close out our day. He's a fantastic speaker, and I hope that you too will enjoy him. Hope right now. Woo! Not all. Thanks, man. Yeah. I'm so excited about this tunnel. <laughs> this is, I feel like this is like NBA stuff, you know? <laughs> so coming through here. You do all the low fives like this, right? Thank you, and I bust through the paper logo, and flame pots, and glitter bombs. It's actually important to get that the right sequence, because if you do glitter cannons and then flame, that's bad. <laughs> don't, don't do that, don't do that. All right, thank you guys for welcoming me up here. This is exciting. Um, I feel like I want to just stand here with a single top spot right down on my head with that one synthesizer note from Van Halen's Jump. <laughs> That'd be rad. Okay, so the idea here is investing in ideas. And that sounds like a startup idea. It sounds like a startup subject. And it is kind of a startup subject, but even if you are with established businesses, it's important to understand the principles and practices that make the process of investing ideas successful. Let me explain why. This is a common thing, right? Entrepreneur, right? A entrepreneur, something that we all probably know, something maybe some of you have heard of. Anyone heard of entrepreneur? Okay. Um, who here has started about, uh, thought about starting a business? Okay, and with the hands still up, I just want to see with the hands still up, who didn't do that? Hands come down. Okay, right on. So these three in the back thought about it and did start the business. Oh, you did not, okay, we flipped it around. Thank you, I understand. Here's the definition, right? Holy smokes, I'm in the way. I don't tend to read the stuff on my slides, but I'll make this one exception. Someone who is gonna start a business, someone who will find the uh, right idea someday, someone who wants to be, oh, sorry, who wants to act like an entrepreneur, someone who thinks about starting a business all the time. The purpose of this talk is to help you understand the specific tactics for moving beyond wantra into entra. <laughs> Just write it down, write it down, really, no, okay. <laughs> So why should marketing professionals care? This is a really good question because that's what this conference is about. Here's how I'll answer that question. Marketing can be beautiful. Design can be beautiful. Strategy development can be beautiful. And I don't know if you can tell from a distance, this tire is actually beautiful. It's been carved with an intricate design. But the reason I bring this image up here is because it is always the case when you are running a business like end-to-end -end running a business, not just responsible for the marketing, that that marketing rubber has to meet the road, right? How does that marketing tie with your process for closing sales? How does that marketing tie with the value proposition of your product or your solution and how it actually gets executed inside the organization or, or for the individual who buys it? What does customer service think about how your marketing is speaking about the product? end-to-end -end understanding of what is happening when your idea hits the road. I think that's very valuable. So having an awareness of these processes, I think, will make you better marketers. 
<laughs> a lot of times the, the, the question comes that if you don't have money to invest, what can you invest? And I actually believe each one of these things is more valuable than money. Number one among them, absolutely number one among them is passion. You cannot replace passion. If you have passion at the leadership level, you will succeed. If you do not, you will not. And it is very important to find something that you are passionate about if you want to create success in your own life. Here are the other things, right? Ego, I'll talk about that in a second. Obviously, creativity, time, and lunch, which I'll get to as well. But why do I mention ego and comfort? If you want to succeed with an idea, you have to be willing to expend some of your ego. The amount that you have going in will not be the same as the amount that you have going out. <laughs> you're going to take some criticism. You're going to get some heavy feedback. You need to seek it, and you need to be willing to invest that comfort, the comfort of putting yourself out there, or rather the discomfort of putting yourself out there so you end up with less comfort in your life when you're done. But ultimately, these are the things that you must invest, whether you do or don't invest money, in order to create success for any idea. Here's the steps. Getting organized, start hacking, and I'll get specific about tactics of hacking, and get out there. I'll also get specific about tactics of getting out there. But let's talk first about getting organized. Anybody here know Simon Sinek? Start with the why? Great, you guys are doing all the right work here. Yes, you can't fake it. Uh, the goal is not to do business with people who need what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe. That's a quote from his book. If you guys haven't read Start With The Why, I'd like to recommend that. There's a few more books I'll be recommending through this talk. But this is a critical one, starting with the why. If you yourself are running a business and you haven't uncovered the why, you're going to keep running up against some obstacles. If you're supporting a business as a marketing professional and you haven't helped them find the why, the thing that they can communicate to the audience that doesn't create customers, but instead creates fans. And what's the difference? A customer will buy what you're selling. A fan wants you to win. Think about it from a sports metaphor standpoint. A fan wants you to win. They want to tell other people why you're great. The difference between selling what you have and selling the why of what you do is that you will create fans versus customers. This is critical. And again, without you know, reading all the quotes that I have from him, I'll just say this is a really good book. I, I do recommend it. I will say passion can't be faked, right? It happens when you're on a path that you believe in. So the importance is to find what you believe in. Here's another great source, right? Vishen Lakahini. Three great questions. Three great questions. Now this may go beyond, you may say, well, I can't ask these questions because I'm already supporting a client. But this is important even for your own life. And if you're working for a client whose business does not align with these questions, or rather their answers to these questions, look at it really closely. People will say, what do you want to do with your life? That's a singular question. That's like a one thing. I can be one thing. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll choose this. I think these questions are much more valuable to get a sense of what you're actually passionate about. What experiences do you want to have in your life? This is a great way to uncover your own passions. In what ways do you want to grow? Another great way to uncover your passions. And how do you want to give back? There's a whole exercise around this. This is a great uh, YouTube talk. I'm not going to give his talk for you guys here. I just wanted to point you in the right direction. I do suggest following this. And even if you find for yourselves that what you're doing is not aligned with what you find, what you discover through a process like this, to be what you're passionate about, I would say look at that very closely. Because I'm more interested in everyone in this room having success in their life than necessarily having success specifically in marketing. But know this, if you do find what you're passionate about and you are good at marketing, then you got a real win. This is hard to read here, but I, you don't actually need to read this, and I'm not going to, this is a whole talk on its own. This is part of getting organized. So if you've got alignment with your passion, you understood the importance of why, or starting with the why, you need to move into the next step. You need to actually start putting the rubber on the road. Who here knows about the lean canvas? It's great. Great, because I can teach you. So, so the lean canvas is actually an enormously valuable and very quick utility that you can employ to set out what your business is. It's one pager. If you can't put everything that you are onto one page, it's going to be difficult for you to either recruit people, to share your vision, to get them behind you, to turn customers into fans. And what is on here? So I can read some of the things that are here. You've got 
what's your problem, what's your solution, what's your unique value proposition, uh, what's your unfair advantage, what are your customer segments, what's your cost structure, what, do you, what are your revenue streams, what are your key metrics, and what are your channels? And I'm not looking for, for paragraphs on every one of these. You need one, two, maybe three bullet points on each one of these. If you're working with a client as a marketer, this is a really powerful exercise to walk someone through. If you get good at this, you can do it in a half hour, but usually you can allocate an hour, uh, an hour for this. If you want to do like a marketing workshop with somebody, take half a day if you want to on laying this out. They may have this nailed, they may not. What I love to do when I'm supporting uh, an organization as a marketing consultant is to literally ambush and isolate the, uh, the leadership in the organization, put them in a room and quickly run them through the lean canvas and find out if they're aligned. This is an alignment audit. Scary pro prospect, as soon as you tell them, all right, you guys need to each go to rooms and I'm gonna question you. If you find that there isn't alignment across the leadership in an organization, you've uncovered a problem that they need to address before you can be effective. But they will appreciate that you help them find it. Now, if you can walk them through generating that alignment, that's great. Bring them into a room and have them hash out the whole session under your guidance until they are agreed. Why they're in business, what they sell, who they sell it to, what their unique value propositions are. This is a really important tool, not only for that process, but as they communicate to the employees in their organization about who they are, what they're about. If they're working with vendors, hey, I just want you guys to have this. This is the one sheet that sort of explains what our business is. It's important for you to know this so that you can better support us. A valuable tool in so many ways. Start hacking. Who has read Google Sprint? Another one that I'm gonna recommend. Do you agree with this? Right on. Here's what we have, it's, again, it's maybe a little bit hard to read. Don't build a product like this. You'll only discover if you have succeeded at the end. Makes sense. Instead, start with something basic and gather feedback as you get more complex. This is a really fascinating process. The Google Sprint, as it's described in this book, allows a team in five days to test any concept for market or sort of product fit, market product fit, Five days, any concept. Think about some concepts that, you, that would be like, well, you, that'd be impossible in five days. Find this book, have a look at it, read the process. I'll tell you some of the, uh, some of the stories from this. These are the steps. Understand, diverge, decide, prototype, and validate. And prototype takes place in one day, not in five, in one day. They've given one day to prototype it and then one day to actually validate it with real market validation processes. How do we do this? Do you guys know who this is? It's kind of, I guess his name is here. Can you guys read that name? <laughs> ha. All right, founder of Zappos. Why is this up here? Did you guys know that Zappos had no inventory when they started? None. They had pictures of shoes, though. And when you bought them, they bought them. <laughs> and then they shipped them to you. Value proposition. People would buy shoes online. Turned out it was a hard sell. Hard sell for investors, anyway. Yeah, people, it's gonna, no. If they don't try the shoes on, they won't buy them, right? That's the way we clearly just think about that. Same thing as with mattresses. People buy, I bought a mattress online. 10 years ago, I mean, like, that's insane. <laughs> and this was insane. This was insane to the degree that he couldn't get people to back it only because you're not gonna buy shoes unless you try them on, right? He didn't believe that. And now Zappos is obviously quite successful. But what he did was he went through a rapid prototyping process. He said, oh, I'm just going to stand up a website. I'm not going to build a distribution network. I'm not going to uh, ne negotiate contracts with manufacturers of shoes. I'm not going to stand up a warehouse. I'm not going to get a huge staff. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to validate an idea with a web page and teeny bit of marketing and find out if that works. Dropbox, similar process. Dropbox wasn't real. Dropbox was a web video tour of a product that didn't exist. It used to be that the term vaporware was a dirty word. If you brought vaporware to market, it was like, well, you haven't really built that, and that's BS. That was when we really had a waterfall process of developing uh, digital products. Now everything's agile and vapor's cool. Well, you got, a, you got a, like a vapor beta, let me see it, you know? People are, are eager to see what the next thing coming out actually is. And vapor's okay because vapor is now part of business. I got an idea. 
So I'm going to create like a, an Axure mock-up of this thing that people can touch and poke at, but it's got no backend, got no database, I've got no user management. It's just going to look like I do. And then find out if that idea is attractive to folks. This is the one we spoke about earlier. Collaborize Classroom. Can I get a? Thank you. All right. Collaborize Classroom was based on a product that was designed for business teams. It got reskinned so that it could be applied in an educational setting. And everything that, that it was with the, the business-oriented collaboration platform went with it. We just changed a couple words and put it in some classrooms to find out if anyone cared. And it turned out they cared a lot. We took that validation as justification to make an investment in a RAD team and some development and work with teachers to impact education for what became hundreds of thousands of students in America. Really, robot, this one's so ambitious. These guys wanted to create a robot that would take things to your hotel room, like your toothbrush or an extra towel or whatever it was, prototype in one day. These guys were led by the Google Sprint team to make this happen. They had some robotic chops already and some prototypes. This robot was supposed to be able to interact with people. It was supposed to be able to drive itself. That's, that's the real value proposition of this solution. It couldn't do either. So they, had, they set up a lab. They set up a lab inside the hotel with a guy literally holding a PlayStation controller to drive the thing and, with a camera. And then another guy who was able to uh, create the communication between uh, the person staying at the hotel and the robot. All fake, but it looked real. And they were able to validate that people loved this experience because they thought it was cute and adorable and they wanted it to come back, so they kept asking for more things. So, <laughs> yeah, prove the point. Groupting. This is one that uh, I started with a team because we thought that Evite sucked and we could do it better. I, I still believe that we did create something that was better, but this actually didn't fly. What's great is that we failed fast. <laughs> Yeah, and failing fast is something that you can only do if you're approaching it with a lean methodology. And that's what we did here. Here's another one uh, for anyone who has actually looked at the name of the company that I work for. I, I am employed by uh, Visiquate. We're based here on Santa Rosa Square. We do artificial intelligence solutions for healthcare management. We bring all the data in and light it up in analytics. It's, it's, it's really helpful if you're a huge organization like Sutter or Kaiser or Cleveland Clinic to have powerful analytics to understand how your business is running. But it's also very complex. You need to be able to do, to write queries and to do other things with that data. You need to know how to build reports and create dashboards. We said, well, what if you could just do like a ask Siri? If you could just say, show me all the claims that got denied by Blue Cross in the last three months for this reason code when this was the procedure. And it would like give that back to you. Faked it. And we crushed it. <laughs> the market went nuts for this idea. It made it possible for uh, vice presidents and C-suite executives to interact with data in a way that they never could before with instantaneous response. And because we were selling to organizations the size that I said, we also had the ability to spend some cash on marketing. But this is how we got the word out. The contracts that Visiquate writes to support the groups that they support are between two and three million dollars. And the only organizations that can afford that are in the, there's maybe 300 of them, maybe 400 in the US that are big enough, although we're, we're scaling down in market now. Which means that I actually know the names of every exec that I'm targeting and every organization that they work for. I can be rifle specific when I market. We use video brochures and business cards. <laughs> We send these out in mailers. That's me. I don't know if you heard the opener there. It said, hey, Michael. I've got Michael's logo in there. I just said his name. You, open, you get this in the mail. It stands out in the tidal wave of stuff that a CFO gets if you're the CFO of Sutter or Kaiser. It's a tidal wave. You send the shiny bubble mailer that's orange and whatnot, they might open that. Or they'll have somebody open it for them, and then they get this. This has been raved about in the organizations that I've sent it to. It actually gets shared around. The people I send it to go and do my work for me inside the organization. I had a, um, a, a hack I'll tell you about a little later on that I think you'll find valuable as well. <laughs> Start hacking. 
Yeah, we have access to tools today that um, really are enormously powerful that we didn't have access to. Right, we have 3D printing. We have rentable uh, machine shops. We actually have now, I, I, learned this, I learned this very recently, if you're into designing fashion, you don't need access to a mass manufacturing capability. You can get garment runs for as few as 30 units. 30 units. It's microfacturing is what it's called. And everybody has access to these tools now. You don't even need to own the printer. People, there's labs that rent you printer time if you want it, and people who will do the CAD designing for you. It's remarkable how decentralized these capacities have become, and we all have access to them. Let your ideas flourish and take action on them as quickly as you can because the tools are here now. And you can do amazing things if you take advantage of them. I have people who can do microcomputer programming. Anybody heard of Arduino? A couple people. Arduino is a, 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 a programmable microcomputer that can control things like lights or motors. Uh, Make Magazine, based out of Sebastopol, has a lab. These people tinker with Arduinos all the time. Uh, Maker Fair, I've seen people create 30-foot-tall uh, robotic giraffes based on these units. They can do amazing things, and they're, they're enormously accessible to everyday people. That's an Arduino right there. This guy, right? <laughs> to achieve great things, two things are needed, a plan, and not quite enough time. Set yourself goals and timelines. This is how you will move towards success with ideas. This is what investing in ideas looks like. You have to set the goals. You have to set the timelines. That's committing yourself. You're investing your own commitment into moving ideas to the next stage. Who's really important? When you're validating, when you're validating an idea, don't ask if this would be cool. Especially if you're a person who you know, and you can be honest with yourself, you're good at getting people excited about stuff. If you're good at getting people excited about stuff and all you ask is, would this be cool? Would you like this? You're just gonna hear yes. That does you no good. Make sure that when you're validating, you say, would you like this? Or would you like this? That's how you get actionable data. That's how you validate if your prototype or your vaporware or whatever it is, is actually meaningful to someone. Force them to choose rather than to just agree with you if something is cool. Number two, make the ask. Make the ask. Can you get someone to commit to a pilot? Can you get someone to say, yeah, I'll use that? Can you get someone to click a buy button, which takes us to number three? Have it feel just like a real buying experience. If you're selling something online and it's total vapor, and this is, we all know Kickstarter, right? Kickstarter puts products up all the time, well, people with products up all the time, these products don't exist, some of them do. And yet people click the buy button and actually pay the money for a product that's not even been made yet. That, that barrier has been broken, we're okay in that space now. If you put a product up online with a buy button on it and they click it and what you say after that buy button gets clicked is, I'm stoked you like this product, we actually haven't built it yet, I'm gonna ship you one as soon as we get there, you haven't lost a customer. You might actually have gained a fan who's willing to support you in that early growth process. Getting out there, here's number three. Getting out there. I wanna talk about conferences, reaching out with thought leaders and influencers. I wanna talk about mutual benefit partners and creating content and then we'll be done. Starting a conversation. This is what I believe about marketing. I believe the purpose of marketing is to start the conversation. How do we do this? One of the things I'm, I'm a big believer in is conferences, but you can go to conferences and get nowhere. You can go to conferences and spend a ton of money and get nowhere. So how do you do it? That's me. I'm doing my renegade marketing thing. This is back in the Collaborize Classroom days. And what is renegade marketing? I actually didn't have a booth at this conference, but I promise you I got more conversations than the people who did. How do you do that? No joke, people. Shoes. <laughs> yes, I am standing up here telling you shoes because in this room, I have started 10 conversations because of my shoes. Now, obviously, I'm not being so specific as to say it has to be shoes, but unless you're awesome at starting conversations, have something that does. 
because you might have the red hot product in your pocket. But unless you can start that conversation, you won't get anywhere at a conference. My entire team wears fancy shoes at every conference that we go to. And I'll tell you, when we're standing together, that's how a conversation gets started. It's like, it's like fish in a barrel as they walk by. Walk by a booth. I've got, my booth has become very sparse. My team just has things about their outfits that start conversations. But you guys with those shoes. Hey, man, thank you for saying so. I like your shoes. What are you looking for at the conference today? Started that conversation, didn't you? Have something besides your product that can start a conversation, unless you rock. If you rock and start in conversations, you just like walking up to people, cool. That's cool. But this, for me, this is, my, this is like my number one hack right now. He spent a ton of money on making a fancy booth. Dollar for dollar shoes, 10 times better return. Swear to God. <laughs> Sorry? Plus you have shoes. Plus you got some shoes. Yeah, and these, these shoes start, start conversations for me at the conferences. They started for me here. I was at, the, uh, at a B&I meeting earlier today. Shoes, man. Shoes, I'm telling you. Seems simple, but it works. Get out there. Thought leaders. Right, so um, there are organizations that support providers and, uh, and billers in the, in the medic medical space. And these organizations actually have now social media ambassadors. These are people who get recruited to be responsible for connecting the innovators with the people who need the innovations. Many industries have these roles now. Finding them, connecting with them, and giving them something valuable. And you guys all know about content marketing already, right? That's that, that I don't know if you've read the book, Jab, 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 uh, was it Uppercut? <laughs> jab, 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 Right Hook? Right Hook? That's the one, jab, 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 right hook, right? It's valuable content, valuable content, valuable content, and an ask. And these are the people who have the audiences that you are trying to reach, and they need good content. How cool your product is is not good content. I get on the phone with these people, I send them things, thought leadership pieces, we have a team of people who create valuable content for how to succeed running the revenue cycle for healthcare organizations. This stuff, people eat this stuff up. This is exactly how we succeeded with Collaborize Classroom. How to succeed with a blended learning format in a K-12 classroom. That's what we taught the marketplace. And then the marketplace came for our products. That was very successful for us. Making it personal, obviously, is very valuable. valuable and this ties back to communicating the message of your why. Why are you doing this? I am passionate about transforming education. I believe that we can eliminate the inefficiencies in American healthcare. These are messages that people get behind. This is how you get articles written. This is how you get blogs written. This is how you get captured for interviews. And your logo goes with you, and your solution goes with you, and your expertise becomes recognized in the marketplace. And when they want somebody who's got the best tools, they think of you because you've established yourself as the best in that industry, or at least the best at this slice of that industry. You guys know Tim Ferriss? Four hour work week, four hour body? This guy's crushing it on putting content out, right? He's got a massive following on YouTube and he puts content out all the time. Get yourself out there. That's what's happening right here with this camera. I brought this camera myself because I'm recording this talk because it's gonna be on my channel real soon. Putting yourself out there is critical. You have content and valuable information and your organizations have content and valuable information that will drive fans to you. You have to start pushing it out. Establish yourself as an organization that has the expertise. I see your product. I've heard about your solution. Are you good? Are you good at this space? Prove it. Don't make me pay for it, just show me. I'll come for the product later. If I believe that you know what you're doing, This, uh, you guys all know this stuff already, right? Power of uh, video. I'm not going to read this to you. This is important. Invest time with influencers, but there are influencers in every section of this. This is the classic adoption curve. Innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards. People especially who are innovators think that laggards suck. But the reality is every group is important to you as an organization trying to grow and succeed in a marketplace. Nobody on here sucks. Everybody on here is critical because the laggards run institutions. And ultimately, if you want to have huge success, if you want to have Facebook level success, if you want to have Toyota level success, you need to be adopted by the institutions in control. They are not early adopters. 
They wait until every other stage is complete. So if you're trying to achieve success in a marketplace, don't treat these people like jerks. Because <laughs> ultimately, they control the top of the market. And there's influencers in every stage. People think that influencers only exist on the left side of the spectrum, but that's not true. They exist at every level of the spectrum. Get to know who they are and start good conversations. Invest in lunch. We talked about lunch. You take lunch, well, some people don't these days. Most folks still take lunch every day. If you're taking time to have a lunch, have a lunch that's worth something to you. If you have the opportunity to take an hour lunch, use it, make an appointment. Get in touch with these people, right? Talk to other people in your space. Get yourself out there. If you have an idea, you must start sharing it now. I can prototype a robot that comes to your door in one day. I don't care what service or business or product you're trying to sell, you can create something that communicates it and puts it in front of people to get it validated for their buying signals. Start doing that. I think the one thing that holds most of us back is that comfort piece. That's uncomfortable. I'm gonna wait until it's perfect. You will never be perfect before you get to the market. The market will tell you how to become perfect. This is a tricky one. I don't want to be in a situation, well, Colt said, people overthink this thing of protection. You can spend a lot of time and a lot of money protecting your ideas so that no one else will do them. The reality is, if a big organization wants to do what you're doing, all you've really bought, if you have a patent, is a ticket to a courtroom. And you're going to waste your own time on the innovation, on the validation, on all the other aspects while you're chasing this down. Some ideas are worth protecting. I think most people who pursue protection do so at the detriment of their own success. The best protection you have is building fans, not customers, fans. Focus there, and you're in a much better spot than you would otherwise be if you didn't have fans, but you had legal protection. <laughs> First isn't always a good thing. So many times people come up with cool ideas. They're passionate about rad ideas. And they'll sit down with someone, or even sit down with me and say, here's my idea, I want to do this. Oh, that's cool, that's kind of like so-and-so, or, or, or what's it called, right? Like there's a, a site that's already doing that, and like, oh man, never mind. I guess I'm not gonna do that. Really? That's, that's it? You heard that one other person was in this space and that's it? Competition is rad. If you got somebody else in the space doing the heavy lifting of educating a marketplace about a new idea, that's really good. That's a wave you can ride. Don't let somebody's done this first be the reason why you're not moving forward. It can be a benefit. I like this picture, right? You guys can see what's happening here. The person who crossed the finish line first. It, it takes a lot of passion, energy, money to be the first person to bring something to market. But you could think of so many examples. Facebook wasn't first. Who was first? Yeah, right? Apple wasn't first to create the, uh, the iP uh, iPod. Do you guys remember Zoom? Do you remember those? Microsoft, other, they weren't first. You don't have to be first. Don't let not first stop you from moving an idea forward. <laughs> and again, get ready to take some beatings. Get the shields up a little bit here, right? It gets heavy, it gets hard. You take a lot of feedback, a lot of knows a lot of that's not going to work for me especially if you're validating for real and you're not just asking do you think this is cool go for the real asks and find out what happens be ready for that but let it be the thing that guides you to success not the thing that takes you out of the pursuit all right here's the last bit right here right so motivation versus inspiring right motivate provide someone with a motive for doing something this is the reason why you should do this. Versus inspire. Fill someone with an urge to do or feel something. Think about these two things when you help guide people in, in marketing with marketing strategies. I would suggest you want to drive them to the latter. That's how you create fans, right? All right, this last bit here. For marketing pros helping entrepreneurs, it's kind of the sum up here. Help them start the conversations, Think lean about their approach to the market and validation. Vapor's okay. And challenge your own assumptions, right? I think we've maybe challenged a few here, but really ask yourself, what assumptions 
is my guidance based on when I'm helping an organization move a product into the marketplace? Maybe you have assumptions about vaporware. Maybe you have assumptions about what can be prototyped in a very short amount of time. Maybe you have assumptions about what it really looks like to get validation or that a conversation with 10 people over the next 10 days just having lunches can get you the information that you need. Do you believe that? Do you not believe that? Check it out. Look to your own assumptions and then recommend the best guidance that you can offer. Thank you.